Welcome to another reactor tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about mod wheel vibrato. So we will start a new ensemble, delete our outputs. And I'm actually going to use a sawtooth oscillator for this one because I think it'll be a little bit easier to hear the slight variations in pitch. As usual, we are going to connect our gate MIDI in to an AR envelope and connect our note pitch MIDI in to our oscillator's pitch control. And then I'm going to, just for fun, increase the max voices to eight and insert an audio voice combiner before our outputs so that we can play chords. All right, so we are going to accomplish mod wheel vibrato by using an LFO. LFO stands for low frequency oscillator. It's really just a control signal that goes up and down at a frequency that's below the audible rate. And LFOs can be used in Reactor to modulate just about anything. There's plenty of built-in LFO modules. We're just gonna use the standard primary LFO and we're actually gonna put this in a macro. Control X there, we'll paste that in there and then we can do our control or command, make our ins and outs and we'll call this macro MW vibrato. We want our LFO to create slight variations in the pitch. So that's why we are passing our note pitch through it. What we're going to do here is add the output of the sine waveform of the LFO to our incoming pitch value. And then we have to decide the frequency of the variation. So I will just create a control here for the frequency and natural human vibrato falls between four and seven hertz. So I'm going to give this a max of seven and a minimum of four and a default of about 6.3. The step size will be zero, so we can get fine increments, and I'll set the mouse resolution to about 200 just to make it a little more of a fine grain control there on our frequency. Actually, the step size, let's make the step size uh, 0 .0 0 0.1. That should be enough for our needs. Default to 6.3, uh, and we're gonna have to decide how much we're adding and subtracting to the pitch so we're going to create a control for the amplitude. And by default, amplitude is going to range from 0 to 1. And that's going to sound like this. So if we turn on our debug mode and turn the amplitude up to 1 and hover over this output, the sine output, we'll notice that the output is fluctuating between negative 1 and 1. And since we're intercepting our pitch value and adding to it, we're basically subtracting up to negative 1 semitone from our pitch value and we're adding up to one semitone if we set our max amplitude to 12 now we're going to be varying our pitch by an octave a more natural vibrato probably would only go up to two semitones at the maximum Two semitones and it starts to get hard to hear the fundamental frequency of the note that we're playing. So we probably want to keep it under two. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the maximum 1.5 because I think that sounds the best. Another thing I'm going to do with this example is I'm going to add an extra input and label it G and I'm going to connect it to the sync input of the LFO. And then if we go back, I'm going to connect our gate signal to that G. And what this is going to do is every time we press a key, the LFO is going to start at zero. Now we have a vibrato effect. And we want to be able to control it with our mod wheel. So that's going to be a, another module, kind of like our note pitch and gate MIDI in. It's going to be a module called controller MIDI in. If you look over here under the properties and you go to the connect tab, this is actually going to communicate with directly with your MIDI controller. And every knob and controller, except for the pitch bend wheel, has a CC number assigned to it. And mod wheels are almost universally going to be CC1. We're going to set the CC number to 1. What we want to do here is we want to adjust the depth of the vibrato with our mod wheel. So the depth is right now being controlled by the amplitude. That's exactly what we want our mod wheel to do. So we're going to multiply this amplitude control by our controller value, which is set to CC1, which is taking information from our mod wheel. Now, another thing you should probably know how to do is how to manipulate unison in your reactor ensembles. This is a great way to make your synthesizer sound super fat and rich and warm 
and it's really fast in Reactor. Reactor takes care of a lot of the legwork for you. It's very easy to implement. I'm going to show you that in the next video that you can check out right here. Go watch that right now.